Hey everybody, I'm Jacob Castro and welcome to another video here on Jacob's Aquarium. And before we get started in this video, let me interrupt this video by showing you the title of this channel in a gorgeous little cute animated way. So, uh, plain and simple, the pond started leaking. Yep, pond started leaking from that end over there, from where the overflow was. Yeah, was, not there anymore actually. I will explain. So, I came to the nursery uh, about a week ago, and I pull up and I'm getting set up, getting ready to package plants, and I notice a rather large puddle right over here. Right over here. Um, towards the end of the pond and I'm just like huh that is rather interesting <laughs> where where could that have possibly come from and I'm thinking to myself maybe something jumped in the water and splashed water everywhere whatever uh, I don't know but then I examined it a little closer and I see water coming out of the little little creases in the wood you know of the pond and then I'm like, oh, and I had a moment, but I collected myself and then I had to figure out what to do from there because this is a gigantic body of water. You can't just fix a leak in the liner by just slapping a patch on while it's full of water. It's, it's not that easy, you know? So I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna have to drain the pond, which, could probably kill the plants because all all the water is going to be new again it's not going to be cycled or anything and and uh that's a lot of water <laughs> that's a lot of water and it's not free so you know there's that and uh is the patch going to work you know can i find a patch that will work and what about if it doesn't after i fill the pond back up all these things were going through my mind it's it, it can be very stressful it may it may not seem like anything like oh it's just a leak in the pond okay just you know fix it but there's a lot that comes along with it there's a lot that goes into fixing a leak especially in an above ground pond that's this big if we're talking a little cute little you know weekend project koi pond it's nothing but this is a this is a over a thousand gallon pond you know so <clears throat> but i got lucky because well let me just show you so yes um the overflow is not here anymore and the pipe's gone and all that stuff and yes i did not film any of that because like i had mentioned uh earlier in the video this leak was like an emergency situation so i had no time to like grab the camera and set it up and you know start filming and talking and all this stuff i had to fix the leak you know so um i went out to Home Depot and I bought a new piece of wood right here. This is a uh, two by eight piece of wood. Um, and I replaced the um, the uh, board that had a hole in it for the overflow, replaced that with this one. And, uh, but obviously before I did that, I had to drain the pond. But as I said, I got lucky because the overflow was right here. So the pond goes all the way down here. So I didn't have to drain all of the water. I had to drain like half of it. It's still a lot of water. <laughs> it's still a lot of water, but thankfully I didn't have to drain the entire pond. So I drained half the pond and I found a patch on Amazon and I put it on and I will show you guys that now. As you can see, it's holding up very well. It's not leaking. And the, the cool thing is, is that it was the perfect uh, diameter or the perfect size, I should actually say, for uh, to cover the hole that I cut in the liner uh, where I put the overflow. So it's not like I had to use more than one patch or make a custom patch. It was just, I all I had to do is buy that patch. So it was, it, was, it made the, the, the repair very easy which um, I was quite thankful for. <laughs> I was glad to find a patch that was like the perfect size. So 
I put the patch on. It's a self-adhering patch. So what that means is that it has adhesive on the back and um, they don't say that you should use any like primers or any, you know, uh, um, extra adhesive, you know, material or anything like that to make it work. Uh, but uh, they do recommend that you clean the surface with alcohol to make sure the surface that you're adhering the patch to is nice and clean. So I did that, uh, but then I found out later after I put the patch on that it was actually recommended that you use some type of uh, primer to prime the surface so that the patch adheres even better. Um, I didn't do that because I found that out after the fact. But the good thing is the patch is holding up with just the, ad the adhesive that it came with. So. I'm very thankful for that because I didn't have to do anything extra. So, you know, the water was leaking out from here and it was coming out of the crack and then it was coming out uh, through here. And yes, guys, I know, okay? I know how this looks. I know you carpenters out there and you, you dads out there that, you know, you, you like build your own house or whatever. <laughs> I know you're probably cringing so hard right now, but um, just... Keep in mind, this pond is sort of old. It's outside. It's bound to, uh, and you know, it's quite unusual. Oh, there's a bird. Hi, birdie. Cutie, he's having a drink. And yeah, I go ahead, just drink all my water. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, this pond is old, okay? It's, it's very unusual in the way that it was built. Uh, you, people don't normally build uh, you know ponds like this that are off the ground and are you know this giant or whatever so you know things are bound to happen okay but I fixed it I went to Home Depot I bought some brackets you know I put them on this thing is not gonna move anyways because you got you got brackets on these supports that go all the way down the pond these things are used to hold up patios that weigh thousands and thousands of pounds you know and then I got supports underneath the pond as well so the pond is actually very very strong it's like you could pretty much say it's built like a tank now that i put these brackets on but yes it is kind of deformed a little bit and the wood's kind of aging and you know some of the supports are a little wonky but you know guys this is this is a homemade it's a homemade thing i'm not a professional carpenter okay i'm not a i'm not a professional woodworker okay this is just something that i came up with in my head and I put it together and so far besides the leak it's lasted quite a while you know and, and I, I can't be more grateful for that so um, I can actually show you the, the old pipe is uh, <laughs> the old pipe is way over there that, that was the uh, uh, that, that was the pipe that ran underneath the pond uh, that was the overflow that went all the way back to the sump filter uh, which, by the way, yeah, the sump filter is now gone too. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so the sump filter is gone. I took that out because obviously if I'm replacing the piece of wood over there that had a hole in it for the overflow, if I'm replacing it with a piece of wood that doesn't have a hole in it, I can't put an overflow there again. And why would I when it started to leak anyways? It just, you know, that, that doesn't work with a pond liner that is put in a a wood pond i think uh those bulkheads used for overflows work best in glass aquariums or acrylic aquariums uh this type of thing it, it seems like it's pretty difficult to make it work in, you know in the sense of like it being leak free you know um it's just the pond liner you know you i mean maybe if you added some primer to the surface to help the the bulkhead adhere to the uh, the liner better maybe that would help I don't know but it, it just doesn't seem like a great idea so I did not want to put an overflow uh, back on the pond and I thought you know maybe it was even better just to not have one because with an overflow as you guys have seen in my previous videos you know uh, it's you know it skims water from the surface at that end of the pond brings it over here and it dumps it into a gigantic you know plastic tub looking thing into a micron sock but as it's doing all that it's moving the water around it's aerating it and that is removing a lot of co2 and i i pay for this stuff you know it's not very expensive but i mean i still pay for it and it's and it's meant for the uh the plants you know so if the plants aren't consuming the co2 because it's being um it's being diffused because the water is being so um it's been it's been is being aerated 
uh, so much, then it serves no purpose. So I figured, okay, let's just not do an overflow. Let's just put a pump inside the pond for now, which is the pump that was used uh, as my, my, my uh, return pump, you know. So let's just put a pump in there for circulation. I hooked up my CO2 line to the inlet of my pump so it sucks in the co2 mixes it around with the water and distributes it throughout the pond very very well and as you can see the water is perfectly still and if there wasn't any of these little floating leaves on the top the water would be it'd look like glass you know it look it's perfectly still so there's no water movement besides the move, movement from the pump but is but it's nothing extreme it's just enough to keep things moving and keep things healthy in here and to distribute the CO2. And so doing it this way, that means the CO2 levels in this pond are now very, very high, which means the plants have more to consume, which will then help them grow a lot better. And also considering that they're out here in full sun, that combination, you can't ask for anything better, okay? So uh, the plants are now getting really, really good CO2. A lot of it and I think this is a better way to um, keep this pond um, alive versus having a sump filter on here now being that I did that I had to figure something out for my auto top-off system because my auto top-off system was originally uh, fed into my sump filter so I thought you know what let's just hook it up to the pond I mean it it couldn't it's not really that it's not rocket science you know so I got some blocks stacked them pretty high and put the uh, 55 gallon drum on top of it and then I uh, I measured how much you know line I would need and you know what level the float valve should be at and uh, I secured it and here we go so now when the pond gets low this float valve will go down and as you can see water will come out and then it'll keep the pond nice and topped off so I don't have to worry that I'm going to come here, you know, if I if I don't have to come to the nursery for a while and the water level drops, I'm not going to have to worry it's going to stay that way, which could potentially expose some of the tops of the plants, which will make them just dry out and die, you know. Because uh, even though some of these plants can grow immersed, um, my plants typically are, are, I mean, as you can see, they're all grown submerged. So, you know, they're already transitioning or they already have transitioned to their submerged state. And once that happens if they if they come out of the water like this some of them do okay like rotala yeah it can do okay but other plants just start to dry out and die so i can't have the water level get too low so that's why the auto top off system was necessary and it wasn't that difficult to install so i put it at that end of the pond and uh that was that so now you're probably wondering well jacob what are you gonna do for filtration like like you know mechanical filtration are you going to filter the pond with the micron sock what are you going to do okay well to answer that question i don't know yet i really don't know yet because i'm really liking i'm really really liking uh how the pond is set up right now i'm really liking how there's not a lot of water movement so the co2 diffusion rate is very very high and i can tell because the plants are purling more than usual and here's a perfect example this luigia right here there's probably a bubble coming up, I would say, every every minute, every two or three minutes. There's actually, you can see a bubble attached to the leaf right there, you know. So the plants are visibly consuming the CO2 and they're purling, which means they're, they're consuming the CO2 and producing oxygen, which is just awesome. So that's that really didn't happen before when I had the sump filter. So I think it's a clear indication that CO2 is diffused a lot better when the pond is set up this way, which is what I need because I need my plants to grow fast. And if they're in their immersed form, I need them to transition fast because I want to give my customers the best possible quality aquatic plan. Okay, so as far as mechanical filtration goes, I don't know yet, guys. I really don't know yet. But for right now, the pond is fine. It, it, it doesn't really get that like the water doesn't really get that dirty. So um, I have a giant fish net and, and I'll come in here and scoop out all the dead leaves since, you know, there's no longer a skimmer anymore. <clears throat> but um, I'm sure I could buy one. <laughs> but again, that just, that's a lot of water movement that I really don't want. 
Um, so, you know, I'm really happy with how the pond is set up right now. And I really don't think it, it needs mechanical f uh, filtration at this time. Um, if, if, if I can't maintain the, uh, the water clarity um, like this and it gets cloudy very quickly or whatever, then of course I will have to look into that. But for right now, it's fine. It's, it's great. So thank God the leak is fixed. And thank God everything else is figured out and the pond is doing great and all the plants are doing great. I was especially happy that I was able to figure it out because I had just uh, restocked um, the pond. So, and my last order was pretty expensive. I spent a lot of money. So, uh, you know, more than you guys probably think I spend on plants. You know, even at wholesale prices, they're expensive, trust me. So I really wanted to make sure that uh, none of the plants died because of this, you know, stupid leak. So, but the pond is doing great now. It's perfect. Um, it's strong, it's built like a tank. Plants are doing great. And I couldn't be happier. Well, I could, I would, <laughs> I'd be a little happier if I could finish this damn greenhouse. <laughs> you know, I have the plastic underneath the pond. It's been sitting there for probably two years. Oh God, <laughs> what is wrong with me? I need to finish this damn thing. <laughs> All right, guys. So, that pretty much does it for this video here on Jacob's Aquarium. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the love and support. If you'd like to buy any of the plants you've seen in this video, visit jacobsaquarium.com where I have almost a hundred different species of aquatic plants to choose from, all at the most affordable price on the internet. And also don't forget to check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All my social media links will be in the description below, okay? I love you guys very much. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, whatever, post them below and I'll respond to you as soon as I can as well. And thank you to all my new subscribers and all my past subscribers and all my longtime subscribers. You guys are the best. I love you so, so much. Have fun with your tanks and I will see you next time.